Greetings, colleagues, fellow teachers and educators around the world. I'm Nikos Sifakis. On today's Everything English Language Teaching, I want to look into the phenomenon of the global spread of English. This is a huge topic, of course, with many different and extremely interesting, even fascinating sides and implications for teaching, and we'll be returning to it in future videos. In this video, I'd like to discuss the domains in which English has, over the years, acquired a central dominant role. We understand that English is an important international language, but it doesn't really hit us until we really consider the specific areas in which it is dominant. So, what are some of these domains? The first and most important domain, the one that triggered the spread of English historically, is of course international banking, economic affairs and trade. The major driving force behind this is, of course, the United States of America and their enormous influence as a dominant political, economical and military superpower immediately following the Second World War. Initially, the USA was and continues to be up there, despite the recent rise of the Chinese, the biggest consumer of international produce. For example, uh, car companies like Toyota and Mercedes sell hugely in the USA. The majority of the biggest multinational companies have their headquarters in the USA. The most successful companies, those with the most iconic products, are, of course, American. Uh, think of Coca-Cola. And as Robert Philipson has famously written, just as the business of America is business, manifestly English for business is business for English. In banking, English has for years been the default neutral language of communication. In many cases, the use of English is even required in official meetings of the same bank. For example, in-house consultations of German Deutsche Bank or Swiss Credit Suisse executives have been in English for years. In 2000, France, Germany and Spain merged the aeronautical industries. They gave the new organization an English name, European Aeronautic Defense and Space Company, and made English its official language. Companies who want to develop an international profile also select English as their official language. Take, for example, the Finnish elevator technology company Koni, where English is official since the 1970s. Another domain where English dominates is international organizations and conferences. 85% of the 40,000 active organizations listed in the Union of International Organizations yearbook in 2020 use English as their official or working language. The vast majority of the major international coalition of states also use English. This is the case with the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, or ASEAN. It was established in 1967 and has 10 member states, which, from the very beginning, adopted English as a working language at its official meetings. In many cases, the official languages are more than one, but English is the only commonly accepted working language. This is the case with the Council of Europe a coalition of 46 states, NATO, a coalition of 28 states, and OPEC, the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, a coalition of 11 states. Here's an easy test for you that shows the dominance of English in most of these international organizations. Type the name of the organization on Google and click on the top result of its website that comes up. Chances are that the default website will be in English. You have to manually select the different versions of the website in the other official languages. I assure you this is not by chance. Go on, do it now. Stop the video and search for the official website of the Nobel Prize and see what you'll get. The European Union is another place where English dominates, and how could it not? Every Eurobarometer study 
shows that English is the most widely known language besides the mother tongue. And this is not likely to change in the post-Brexit era, uh, no matter what the official policies are. In addition to coalitions of states, many international organizations, mainly in Asia and the Pacific region, keep records of their work exclusively in English. This widespread use of English in international relations and international politics makes the adoption of the English language necessary for any country wishing to gain and maintain access to the international political and economic community. How does this happen? Well, initially, English is often needed for development loans, either from international organizations such as the World Bank or the International Monetary Fund, or IMF, or from private sources of funding. Once borrowing is secured, it is more likely that any form of assistance, whether it be in public health, rural development, education or public works, will be primarily in English. In this way, the English language, and with it those who handle it appropriately, plays a dominant role in the economic development of a country. All of this does not mean, of course, that there have been no objections to this unprecedented spread of English. Objections have been huge, and there is an extensive and persuasive raft of research that attempts to explain this spread and seek ways to deal with its many repercussions. More about these in other videos uh, in this channel. Let's look at other domains where English dominates globally. Take the arts, and in particular cinema and music. Well, this is a no-brainer. For more than 60 or 70 years, the USA has dominated the world of so-called blockbuster films. Similarly, in pop music, 99% of the pop bands listed in the Penguin Encyclopedia of Popular Music choose either wholly or mainly English as the language in which to write the lyrics of their songs. Even pop groups that are not based in Anglophone countries, like uh, the hugely popular bands of K-pop in South Korea, use a lot of English phrases in their lyrics, and it is argued they progressively adopt more and more English names for their bands, even if these bands are not that popular in the USA and the UK, for, for various reasons. See the very interesting Wikipedia article on K-pop and English. I will link it in the description below this video. Another domain where English dominates is international tourism. According to the latest World Tourism Organization reports, in 2019, international tourist arrivals reached 1.5 billion. With regard to international tourism expenditure, the USA leads in absolute numbers, with the Middle East and China following suit. But forget that. To realize the true power of English, think of this. Does the fact that you don't understand the local language of a particular destination stop you from traveling to that country as a tourist? And how many times when asked how your travel to this or that city or village was, you responded that, yes, you really liked the food or the sights, but you didn't like the fact that the locals did not speak English? It's no wonder that all international airports around the world provide information in English, while large hotel chains employ English-speaking staff. Restaurant menus offer English translations of their dishes. Many popular credit cards also use English. David Crystal mentions the example of street artists traveling the world who try to communicate and make money using whatever form of English they know. Take another domain, publishing. Wikipedia tells us that China has surpassed the USA and the UK in new titles and re-editions of books, but English is the unequivocal language of bestsellers. We all know the famous New York Times bestseller lists, for example, and how influential they are globally. English is also the international language of translation. More and more books are translated into English. 
it is important to note that translations of major works of prose are only available in English, which necessitates the use of such translations by people who want to know world literature and do not know many other foreign languages. There are also cases where literary works written in other languages have been translated into your own, not from the original, but from an English translation of the original. Also, it's worth mentioning the many superb authors who are non-native English speakers and have written or write in English, such as Vladimir Nabokov, Joseph Conrad and Tuni Almeil, who are native speakers of Russian, Polish and Norwegian respectively. The war is language. Language abused for advertisement. Language used like magic for power on the planet, wrote Allen Ginsberg. And this is nowhere else truer than in the world of mass media. Apart from the major media corporations which use English as a means of reporting the news on a global scale, there are local newspapers and magazines in many countries that are English only. I link below the very interesting database of world newspapers. Any movement that wishes to make its intentions known on the broadest possible basis should make sure that they reach news agencies around the world in English. And ordinary citizens who choose English for their posters on protest marches are very aware of this too. What is more, magazines and periodicals of high quality and prestige with the ability to intervene and influence use English. Take, for example, Traveller, a publication of the US National Geographic with uh, travel and tourism themes around the world. Uh, Gourmet, with nutrition, recipes, restaurant reviews and more general lifestyle issues. International Living, with information for those who wish to reside in other parts of the world. And there are many, many more specialized periodicals that use English, for example, in the areas of decoration and real estate, like House and Garden or Architectural Digest. The list, of course, is endless. Along the same lines, let's not forget the key TV news stations around the world that use English and native speaker presenters, of course, like Al Jazeera in Qatar, Russia Today, or RT as it's now known, in Moscow, and Press TV in Tehran. For these stations, I'd also include iAfrica and France 24. English is the vehicle that allows them to be visible beyond their immediate reach. Okay, next domain, science and research. The aphorism publish or perish describes the pressure to publish academic research in order to survive in academia. On the other hand, all the major research internationally is published in English, which means that in today's hugely competitive academic environment, if you don't publish in international journals, almost 100% of which in English, you cannot land an academic career. The flip side of this is that today, probably the most handsomely paid service is professional copy editing of academic publications authored by non-native speaker scientists working in European, Asian or South American countries. Copy editors are experts in academic writing in different genres whose job it is to review, correct and improve the first drafts of scientific papers written by scientists who are non-native users of English. How did we come to this? Well, a hundred years ago, English, French and German were almost equal as languages of scientific publications. As the years went by, however, participation in the international research literature was increasingly associated with the need to fund scientific research. This, of course, resulted in the rapid supremacy of the more economically powerful who favoured English. 
This process was accelerated in the 1960s, when proficiency in the foreign language was gradually phased out by higher education institutions in the United States as a criterion for admission to universities. The dramatic peak came in the 1980s, when the impact factor of scientific journals initially in science and later in the social sciences, essentially imposed the publication of such papers, which is nowadays considered natural and unavoidable. These procedures have resulted in university courses around the world using syllabi and textbooks almost entirely written in English. Which brings us to the domain of education. There are various things to consider here. First, that there is an enormous demand for English medium universities around the world, which is a byproduct of the huge spread of English in scientific research. A large part of international students are absorbed by universities in the UK, the USA, and to a lesser extent Australia and Canada. According to the UK Council for International Student Affairs, the total number of international students studying in the UK in 2017 and 2018 was just below half a million, with students from China being a quarter of that number. See the link in the description with uh, some really fascinating statistics. This has inevitably led to the so-called internationalization of education, with UK-based universities opening branches in various countries around the world, essentially selling their product, resulting in what can be called mass English medium education. The demand is so huge that there are more and more university courses, even entire universities around the world, all using English. See this quote from a professor of the Department of Languages and Cultures of the University of Aveiro in Portugal. What they say is representative of the whole rationale behind adopting English as the medium of instruction, a full link in description. Needless to say, the demand for English has spread to secondary and even primary state education through CLIL, or content and language integrated learning in many Asian and some European countries. The last domain I will be referring to is ICT, or Information and Communication Technologies. In the early days, the internet was dominated by the English language, uh, with 78% in 1998, according to UNESCO. But in 2005, English was still up there, at 45%, despite the rapid growth of other languages used online. Wikipedia tells us that in 2015, 55% of the most visited websites had English language homepages. And the estimate for internet users by language shows 1.1 billion users for English, less than 900 million users for Chinese and 344 million users for Spanish. Also, the English version of Wikipedia is by far the most popular version. The fact that the internet not only speaks English, but has English running through its veins is shown if we consider key components of internet terminology, like the so-called top-level domains .com, .org, or .edu, which come, of course, from the English words company, organization, and education. There are many other domains where English dominates, both historically and synchronically. One example is international safety, where we have specific lingos like airspeak and seaspeak. Another example is interpreting and translation, where English often acts as a relay language. Yet another is marketing and advertising. Thanks for watching. As always, I look forward to communicating with you. Bye for now.